Hi, thanks for joining me today. My name is Andres, and I'm part of the RFD team, which, as you probably know, are the creators of Team Navigator. Today, I'd like to share with you a little about what we see is in the future for Reservoir Simulation, the challenges that we will face, and also how we are preparing Team Navigator to be able to tackle those challenges. Now, one of the things that prevents us from making faster decisions are the so-called industry silos. At RFD, we're working hard to break down these silos and bring geologists, geophysicists, engineers, and petrophysicists together under one infrastructure. We're actually in a great position to be able to do this. T-Navigator is actually one of the only complete subsurface modeling tools that has been developed from the ground up under the same team, same infrastructure, same language, and same company. This allows us to circumvent some of the common communication overheads that can arise when toolkits grow by acquisition. So if you're a geologist, you can start from a blank project and you can load all the field data, things like well trajectories, well markers, horizons, faults, everything that you need to build your static model. You can then use these elements to generate the structural and property model. So creating a grid and populating with some properties that you need to run the dynamic model. He or she can then use a large number of pre-processing tools that are his or her disposal to quality control the model and ensure everything is in order. At the same time, a petrophysicist or a reservoir engineer can start working on the fluid properties like rel relative permeabilities or PVT curves. Simultaneously, other engineers can be working on the schedule, describing how the field is going to be operated, how wells are going to be controlled. And whilst all this is being done, a well engineer can be working on the well design, visualizing its trajectory and constructing the well by adding different elements to it, making sure that everything is there in order for the model to run. By working together with each other on their one environment, we avoid this time-consuming iterative process that can negatively impact our project timelines. What's more, having all the tools and information in one place means that making changes to the model is very easy. It just requires a couple of clicks. Once a consensus is reached, the team can go straight into running the model and querying the results with a multitude of post-processing and pre-processing tools. Results are also dynamic and instantaneous. This means that the results are able to be shared and discussed as the simulation is being run. This allows to query everything and making sure that we have a fit-for-purpose model and allowing us to make faster, more informed, and more efficient decisions. The next topic we'd like to discuss is uncertainty. Now, all industries deal with uncertainty. However, the oil and gas industry is notorious for this. Not only are we dealing with huge investments, which are very susceptible to operational strategies, but there is also a lot of uncertainty on the data that we use, and even on our own interpretations. In order to be able to make the efficient decisions of the future, it is important that we take this variability and uncertainty into consideration. Traditionally, this has been relatively difficult, mainly to two constraints. First, we need an efficient workflow to be able to generate and more importantly simulate a large amount of models in a reasonable amount of time. Secondly, once all the cases are run, we need to make sense of them all and this is not a trivial process. At RFD, we're making good use of state-of-art simulation technologies to make this a reality. So, T-Navigator actually comes inbuilt with uncertainty handling workflows. What's more, because we have such a strong integration, we're able to tap into all available toolkits, allowing seamless working from static modeling into results viewing. So, we can take in any type of uncertainty. Say, for example, seismic uncertainty in the form of different horizon interpretations. We can then use a workflow to incorporate all of these horizons along with different property interpretations to produce a large number of completely different models with different structure, different property distributions, and different operational strategies. With our uncertainty incorporated into the workflows, we can then use the uncertainty toolkit to run our calculations. Now, for those of you who have tried it before, T-Navigator is pretty fast, so this is usually not too many issues when it comes to runtime. 
However, for cases like this, where you're running hundreds or even thousands of simulation, you might want to have a little computing power up your sleeve. Cluster and cloud simulations are perfect for this sort of application. T-Navigator can run both on cluster and on the cloud, allowing you to use the awesome amount of computing power to speed up the simulation processes. So from the moment you click Run, we can have as many simulations running at the same time, reducing the simulation time of your project to any desired time frame. Once done, we, have, we can use the integrated post-processing tools to visualize all of our results in one single platform. Anything from well rates to overall field values, they're all there waiting for you. There are many other tools available, like for example Pareto charts to analyze the effect of input parameters, and also a CDF curve to see how exactly your results are distributed. Now, there are also no shortcuts taken here. Each one of these cases is a full-blown model, so at any point you can open that model and work with it as a standalone simulation case. Being able to incorporate uncertainty on our day-to-day -day modeling and analyzing the impact it has ultimately leads us to taking more informed, safer, more efficient decisions. Now, as engineers and geologists, we all have probably come across challenges where the thing that we're trying to accomplish is very specific, so we devise our own piece of code. In most of these situations, integration between our standard toolkit and the self-developed application can be a little clunky, tedious, and imprecise. The technology of the future needs to be able to address this. The technology of the future needs to support and encourage users to develop their own applications, to enhance the tools they develop, to not limit you in what you can do. And this is something that we're trying to strive for at RFD. So, in order to be more flexible and open, we've exposed all of TNAV's useful tools and functionalities in the form of Python. In case you don't know, Python is a very powerful scripting language that is gaining a huge amount of popularity due to its flexibility, its ease of use, the number of available libraries, and the fact that it is open source. In TNAV, Python can be used in many ways. We can use what we call, for example, a graph calculator to add any user-defined parameters. Things like water flooding efficiency, production plateau length, region-specific production, anything you can think of. The program stops being the limit. Now, your imagination is the limit. But Python integration doesn't stop there. We know that each one of you have applications or toolkits external to T-Navigator that you use in your day-to-day -day lives. A good example of these are economic models. Whatever we're working, the company we are at will likely have a proprietary economic model in Excel or another program. What do we do when we want multiple tools doing different things and we want them to talk to each other? Python. With Python integration, you can not only create your own parameters, but also use Windows commands to call external programs and ask them to do a specific task. So, going back to the economic model example, we can use the Python Windows commands to put simulation results into an Excel-based economic model. Then, we get the economic model to perform the economic calculations, locate those calculations, and export them back into TNAV, where an optimization algorithm will then generate a new simulation case and optimize our revenue or NPV, or any other economic measure. This creates a dynamic link between these two toolkits. What we end up is a toolbox that is no longer bound by its own scope, a tool that can be used for any sort of application, no matter how obscure or specific your case might be. Now, when we mention machine learning or AI, there can sometimes be a little fear. And that's completely understandable. Some people might be hesitant to embrace the technology for fear of it taking part of our jobs. However, no matter how good machines get at complex tasks, we will always require humans to do the real interpretative work and make the real decisions. What is more, machines are really good at procedural tedious work that takes grip of our schedules. So this is something we can use to enhance our workflows, efficiency, and quality of life. At RFD, we're always looking at ways in which we can use machines to make our life better. 
Say for example we have one of those huge fields with thousands of wells. Now, do you want to sit there and create FASI's logs for each one of those wells? Or do you want to get on with some of our structural modeling, property modeling? I know what I would rather do, and it doesn't involve too many well logs. Now, with the new features, we can now train the machine to generate the fascist log based on a set of our initial interpretations, and then run through an unlimited number of interpretations at the click of a button. This then frees up time for either do some further work or have an extra long coffee break. The extra time is now in your hands. But it doesn't really stop there. We're always looking at small ways of incorporating new technologies. Right now, we have also incorporated into seismic processing for identification of geobodies and some optimization algorithms as well. We are all ears though, and we invite you to give us ideas as to how best to use machine learning in your day-to-day -day lives. Who knows, maybe you'll end up shaping the future of surface modeling. These are just some of the ways in which we're trying to tackle some of our future challenges. As you can see, we're a technology company that is committed to the advancement of the industry. So thank you very much for listening. I appreciate your time. Hopefully this has proven informative and useful. And until next time, 